Today I wanted to look at film types in Silver FX Pro. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. We're going to take this line image today and convert it into a black and white image using uh, Silver FX Pro and I'm going to show you how film types can really aid you in getting some really creative black and white images. Now, I'll also link this image in the description below so you can download it and follow along with me. Let's go ahead and launch Silver Effects. I'm just going to use the uh, NYX Selective tool. I'm just going to click this little icon right here for Silver Effects, and we'll go ahead and launch it and get started. And here we are in Silver Effects Pro. Now, right now, it's defaulted with the uh, first preset, which is the neutral setting for Silver Effects. So it's just a basic black and white conversion. I just want to take a few uh, moments here just to give you my philosophy on using uh, film types. Now, I love film types, and I think they're a great starting point to get your creative uh, juices flowing, just like uh, the presets are uh, a good starting point to get your creative juices flowing. So sometimes I use presets, sometimes I'll use film types. Now, film types are great because they do emulate different film types. And the guys at Nick spent a long time getting these uh, film types right. So when you come over to the right side of the interface and you see film types, see this drop down menu, right now it says neutral, right? And everything here, the grain is shut off basically, and the sensitivities are all centered at 0%. So really no enhancements are happening there with sensitivity or grain. But if I click this drop down menu here, you see all these different type of film types. Now, when I'm working with film types, a lot of times I will actually start with film types rather than coming up to the top of the adjustments here and starting with brightness, contrast, and so forth. Because I really want to see what those film types will look like on a basic conversion. And that'll give me a very good starting point. And another way I'll use film types is I'll start out sometimes with a preset and then see what a film type will look like on that preset. So I have two different ways of doing it. But today, I wanted to show you how I would do it starting out with a film type. After I've chosen a film type that I really like, then I'll come to the top of the adjustments the global adjustments, and then I'll start making uh, my fine tuning adjustments there at the top and work my way down. So that's my philosophy behind working with film types. I just wanted you to get inside my head and understand why I would even use a film type. But film types are so cool because I really like the fact that they can really emulate some really cool black and white films. And black and white photographers through the years that have used these different films, they've used different films for certain reasons because they really love the emotion that that film gave them or just the quality of image that they got from a certain type of film. And if you like black and white photography, like I like black and white photography, Silver Effects is really the program in my opinion, that gives you the best results because it takes into consideration all these wonderful things like film types, the presets are amazing, and all the different adjustments that it lets you do, the toning and so on and so forth. It's all right there for you in one package to help you to get the results that you need and want. And let's not forget the control points. Those control points are amazing to help you target just uh, localized areas of your image to really turn it into something extra special. Okay, enough of my philosophy. Let's go and check out the film types. Okay, so usually what I'll do is open up the film types and start at the top. And as you hover over these film types, they will change and you can just look at them. So there's Kodak ISO 32 Panatomic X. Now that's an actual film, okay? And now we'll go to an Ilford Pan Plus 50. Here's it. AGFA APX Pro 100. And so I'll just go through these and see how they give you different results. Now that's really cool if you want that really nice high key background, that really light background. So we go down through here and let's just keep going, going through them here. I'm going to show them all to you. I'm just going to go down through and take note when you find one that you really, really like. That one's really cool for me. I kind of like that one. I like that one too. Whatever look you're looking for. But again, this is how you get inspired, just by going down through these and, and finding one that you really like. But sometimes I'll just stop and say, yeah, that's the one. Or other times I will I may mark it, write it down, and then come back to it. But usually I like to go down through them all just to see what they're going to do. 
because you never know what it's going to do. Like, I really like that one, the Kodak P3200 T Max Pro. Okay. Here's another one, kind of a dreamy look, and that's kind of fun. The Adox Silverman 21. Another one there. Let's just keep going down through. But you get a lot of choices here. Now, I'm going to go back to this guy right here. This is the one I kind of liked right here, the Kodak P3200 T-Max Pro. So let's click on that. Now, that accepts it. But notice a couple of things here that it's doing. Actually, three different things. It's setting a grain for you and the uh, softness of the grain. It's going to give you that authentic look for that film. And it's going to set your sensitivity for that film. You know, like that film might favor reds, making your reds a little bit lighter, your yellows a little bit lighter. Your greens are pretty neutral, but a little on the lighter side, lighter cyans, lighter blues, and violets, uh, slightly lighter. But then also notice here this uh, levels and curves. This is the curve for that particular film. Now, if I would click on a different film here, remember what that curve looked like. Let's click on this film right here. And you'll notice, look at that curve. It's much different. So, again, this is where the engineers at Nick at the time went and worked on all these different film types to emulate them so they could get them as close to the actual film as they could get them to. So, I'm going to go back to the Kodak P3200 T-Max Pro and click that. And now we'll work from here. I really just love the whole experience inside of Silver Effects Pro. Just the way this interface is laid out, it's a lot of fun. And by the way, if you don't want to see your presets over here, see this little um, icon right here, just give this a click and your presets will go away in case they're bothering you. Sometimes when you see presets over there, they may uh, disturb your eyes. Sometimes you just want to see the image. So you can make that go away if you want to. Let's go back to the top of the adjustments and start working with the global adjustments. Now, we, like that famous uh, photographer and uh, photo developer, Ansel Adams, become the uh, conductor of a symphony that we're going to write and turn this image into a work of art. And now it's time to play. I'm going to start with brightness. Now, I have all these guys opened up because remember I told you my last tutorial you can close these guys up and you only see the brightness control. But if you open them up, a whole bunch of other sliders open up here for you. So I recommend that you open these all up. And so I may, a lot of times what I'll do is check my overall brightness. And if it looks good, it's good. Now, here's my histogram down here so I can check things along with that histogram. And it'll update in real time. So I'll start playing with my highlights. If I think my highlights are too much, I may ease back on those a little bit. And I'll just start playing with my midtones. You know, do I want them darker? Ooh, yeah, and I kind of do. Maybe somewhere around there, and I'll play with my shadows. So I want to open up my shadows any. Not too much, but maybe a little bit. That's looking pretty good. And then my dyna dynamic brightness, which, I, like I said, is an intelligent brightness control. And just play with it. Lighten it up if you want to go more high-key looking, or you can darken it up. And it does a wonderful job. And I kinda, I'm kind of liking it. Maybe right there. Maybe slightly darker. And now our contrast. We can play with our uh, Amplify Whites and Amplify Blacks. So let's try amplifying our whites a little bit. Do I want to amplify them? I might just go, I'm not going to go too much here, but maybe just a little bit. And my Blacks. And I'm just adjusting this real time for you guys. I'm just playing around and seeing what I like. What my eye likes. And when my eye likes it, I stop. Stop. And here's soft contrast. Okay, so you can see there it's getting really, really soft, but it's it's really blocking up my shadows. But you can see the result I'm getting with soft contrast. So let me let me pull that back. Let me go the opposite way. See, if I go the opposite way, it's giving it a more detailed type look. So this is a fun control to play with. And I think I like it pretty much off. I think it's zero. Maybe, maybe just slightly to the right of of zero percent maybe like around like around three percent i like that and i always like to come back here and hit compare before and after so it's going in the right direction and don't forget we have the actual contrast control which we can play with that too see if we want to give it more contrast or less contrast i don't know yeah it was pretty good right where it was i'm just going to leave it right where it was and now we have structure here and i love the structure now this is the overall structure of your image 
You can just give your image a little bit of overall all structure. And I might just give it a tiny wee bit. And again, I'll play with the highlights. I'll move them one way. I'll move them back the other way. Sometimes I may want to go to the left. See if I go to the left, how this gets a little more dreamier back here. I'm taking some detail out of the highlights. As opposed to if I move it to the right. See, you can see details coming back in here. So what I might want to do here is just, you know, come back a little bit to the left of center just to give me that dreamier look here, because I love the dreamy glow that I'm getting here. It's really beautiful, in my opinion. And then I'll play with the highlights, move it one way, move it back the other way. Okay, so I'm going to go for a more dreamy look on this, this line. I want his, I want his uh, fur to look kind of soft, like you want to come up and pet that thing. But of course you wouldn't, right? Because it would tear you apart. But man, it looks cool. So I'm going to ease back on that just a little bit too. And then the fine structure, think of it as more of a kind of a sharpening. It just uh, gives you an overall sharpness to the fur here. And I don't want to go too crazy here. And I don't think I'm going to use this one at all. I'm going to leave it at zero. And again, I'm going to come back to compare. Here's my before and here's my after. Now you can shut off your global adjustments right here by clicking this uh, check here just to see where you've come from. See, here's a before and after but I really like it. Now, I'll be honest with you, I could spend hours on this image and enjoy each moment with it, uh, but I don't want to bore you, so I'm not going to spend all the time on it, but this is how I start with the global. And then, of course, I could go into the control points. I'm not going to go there right now. I've already worked with the... Uh, with the film type. Now, I can alter these uh, sensitivities if I want to. I don't want to. I want to keep it right for that particular film. But if I wanted to, I could come and adjust these. Nobody says you can't. You can do anything you want. And then we could come down here to the finishing adjustments here. And let's just look at some of these things in here. Do we want to tone this image? Now, I love the toning in here. So click this drop down. Right now, it's just the neutral black and white tone. But we can go through these different split tones here and find one that we really like. And then once we get one that we like, we can alter it. Now I like sepia and I like selenium tones. And I'm thinking selenium tone, a selenium tone would look really good. Let's go down into the uh, sepias. Sepias are cool too. But today I'm feeling more cooler. So I'm thinking I feel like I want a selenium tone. So I might use a very minimal selenium tone here, like number four. If I wanted a five, it's going to give it a little more blue. And we can go to a six. It depends on the mood you're in, you know. Right now, I'm in this mood, so I'm going to click it. Now, we have the strength here. We can adjust it. And if I move it to the right, it'll get stronger. See, I can make it really blue. And you may want something like that. You may have a decor in your home that you need some something that's really blue, but kind of monochrome. And you might want to go something with a heavier blue. But let's take it back to 22. Notice when I move the strength, notice the silver toning slider and the paper toning sliders move along with it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to 22 because I like that right there. But I could adjust the silver toning. Think of the silver toning as more in the shadow areas and the paper toning is more in the highlight areas. So I could give this more, you know, bring the highlights up. It's going to give it this color that's right sitting right in here. Remember, it's on 9%. So let me just show you that. I'm going to move it up. See how it's adding that tone to the highlights? I'll pull it back. Where was that at? Nine, I believe it was. So I like it. And the same same here for the silver toning. It's more working with the shadows. So it's a 22%. I'll drag it up and see it's working with the shadows more. Okay, but I'm going to take it back to 22%. Okay, so there we go. And then we can alter these colors if we want to, but I like it. I'm going to leave it right there. Then we could add a vignette. Right now, vignette is off. So And they give you different settings here, like lens fall off one, Lens fall off too, and you can hover through these. You can go lighter around the edges, whatever you want. Okay, I'm going to leave it off for now, and uh, I'm just showing you what you can do with these things. There's a place center, so you could tell it where you want the uh, vignette to uh, protect the center area. And then we have burn edges. Let's uh, Right now it's off. Let's turn it on. See how it burns the edges of the image? And I love burn edges. Burn edges too. All edges too. All edges soft. And all edges soft too. So we have all this stuff. I'm not going to mess with that now. 
But again, I would spend time and play and really figure out how do I want this to go. But for now, I'm just piquing your interest on what you can do. And then uh, then image borders, okay? So well, let's go to image borders right now. It's off. So if we wanted to put an image border on it, we have all these different borders. And I love the image borders too. So you can see how they're working. And once you get an image border that you like, you can take it as well as all the vignettes and things. There's other sliders in here. So you have full control. Believe me, these are more like a preset thing. Okay. But uh, where am I at? Image borders. Okay. So if I open up image borders here, notice I have all these controls in here. I can adjust the size of the border. So I have all this adjustment. I can adjust the spread. See how it spreads out the black areas there. I can bring them, make them really thin like this. Just see a little bit of that black. So you've got all this flexibility. You can clean, have them clean these edges clean or rough so you can play with that. But for now, let's go ahead and uh, yeah, let's leave the border on. What the heck? Let's leave the border on. Now, once you're satisfied with everything, all you need to do is click OK and we'll be right back into Photoshop. Now we're back in Photoshop. So we've come from here a cool image and we went here now like i said i'll leave the uh, link for this image in the uh, description below you can download it if you want to follow along or just play with this image see what you can come up with but there you go well there it is working with film types in silver effects pro they're really a great way to get your creative juices flowing if you enjoyed the tutorial today please give it a like Share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing. <laughs>